Scott. Hello, Tyler. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. All right, we're going to bring on our guest. He said he's ready. He said he was having a headphone issue. Ah, I can but, relate to that. Yeah. At yeah. least it's not a... Not, at least it's not an anchor at the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have issue uploading the entire thing rather than just uh, you know speaking. Now, I believe that we just got joined by our guest. Are we? J- Hello. Hey. Yeah. This is Astro. Yes. Here. Yes. Ah, All right. Perfect. So we finally We're got going. we finally got this working, and I'm sure you guys will know if you guys heard the pre-show or you will hear it. Because we haven't recorded, or we kind of recorded. Um, Anchor has been very, <laughs> very sucky for us, and um, it's had some technical issues. So Scott and I had to try to adjust today. And because we're such rookies at anything technological, we screwed up and wasted an hour and a half of our time. It's kind of like a dress rehearsal. And uh, luckily, yeah. we figured it out before our next guest. And we are happy to have on. Um, a guy who's very popular in the toy photography world. And as Scott and I said into a void of nothingness earlier today on a show you'll never hear, this guy has a great uh, assortment of collection. He does a great variety of shots. He has some great army building shots. He does comedic shots. He does dramatic shots. Nothing looks the same. He always comes at it from a different angle, uh, different lighting, and... But there's also, once you see his photos and you see another one of his pop up, it's easily recognizable as his uh, his fingerprint on the photo. We are happy to have him today. His name is on Instagram. You can follow him at Astro underscore Ender. And we are honored that he's taking time out of his day to join us on the podcast. We have a lot to ask him. How are you doing? And is your name Astro? Oh no, it's actually Jerry. <laughs> but Jerry. For, yeah. Okay. And, and thanks for the awesome name. intro, Tyler. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for blessing us with your content. Um, <laughs> Scott is the one that let me know that he was interested in bringing you on as a guest, and thought it was a fantastic idea. And especially just looking at uh, all your artwork again, going through your page, it's just it's a joy. It's a lot of fun. You could tell that you have a lot of love for what you do, and. Uh, Obviously, people are recognizing that, so we want to thank you for your time. And uh, right off the bat, we want to ask you, as much as you're willing to uh, give and indulge us, we would love to know a little bit about uh, your history uh, growing up and maybe what was the thing in your past that ignited the love for all things pop culture and comic book and anything of that nature. And then ultimately what led up to uh, what you're doing now. Oh man, that's a long intro. Uh, what a long thing to say. Let's see. <laughs> it's a, it's a long story. I guess it started with like wrestling figures when I was a kid. You know, you get the. Okay. Honestly, I don't remember who was the company that made them, but it was like back in, back in the days when it was WWF. Uh huh. I don't know, guys. I remember? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they had like the <laughs> most oddest articulation. You're like, like if you have, I don't know if you guys remember the share. Uh, there was like a cop wrestler. Oh yeah. I remember him. Yeah, it, honestly, those things, you have to, like, rely on just twisting them, just to, like, even move them, get to twist the whole <laughs> weight, and just to be, like, acting like you're side punch, but then you see the legs are pointing to the forward, and you're like, man, this figure is so off. But as a kid, you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And compared, <laughs> to, compared to today, it's a big difference. Oh, definitely. But, yeah, overall, I'm, I mean, from there, I progressed to having Dragon Ball Z from the Jack-specific figures. And then okay. getting them, yeah, that's like old ones. Like those were the ones that are like look when you know you're a kid, you see like oh this is amazing. But today you're looking at like God <laughs> does not even resemble Trunks, does not even resemble Goku. <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> and then we hop into like the Toy Biz classic lines. I, I had the my I think one of my first Toy Biz figures was the Cyborg Spider Man. Oh, I don't know. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember that one. That one's where it had like a kind of like the, i think it was based off another universe uh, sorry another earth where he was infected by cables disease the i forgot the the techno thing yeah and then from there you know i have that figure i pose like as much as i can I just play around with it you know just like two kids like <laughs> slapping each other's head like figures clock 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 <laughs> 
And from there, I mean, I got my villains. And probably my favorite, one of my favorite, favorite villain figures was the Carnage figure. And it actually had like an unmasked head. I don't know if you guys remember that one. I do not remember the unmasked head, no. Oh, that one. It was like a, it was very soft goods. No, not, sorry, not soft goods. It was like plasticky feel. But oh, it was, okay. hmm. it was made by Toy Biz. And I think it was the Spider Man Carnage Unleashed line. And that one, honestly, like even to today standards, I think like it still looks really good. I mean, it's, the face <laughs> is not pretty, but like if you see the paint one, you feel like, whoa, this is actually not bad. Yeah, some of the old Marvel figures back in the day were amazing. Like even from the old Spider Man, like Raimi trilogy, all those figures were brilliant. Oh, definitely, especially the. Uh, I think it was Jameson where he actually came with his rocking tape. On. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or uh, Ali and Defoe, we came with the chair and the goblin mask. Oh, uh, great! I, I never had that one, but I do remember seeing it one time. I think, I, well, down here in California, we have like a Frankincense, so some people carry like retro stuff. And I, I swear, I feel like I've seen a few of those. And I just, actually, oh, nice. I, yeah, I think I just shared the link with you guys how that carnage yeah. looks, and you can literally see like, whoa, the paint house. It's pretty rad. Oh, that's what that was that popped up on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1995. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, dang, did they know that we were talking about that, this app, and they just sent me a link? <laughs> oh, who knows what today's times. Talk about <laughs> cat food, and next thing you know, you see cat food on your Facebook ads, you're like, well, it's not strange at all. The freakiest <laughs> thing is when you, when you just think it, and you don't even say it, and you see that ad. That freaked me out even worse. Uh, but getting away from conspiracy government theories, uh, <laughs> what is there any show what, growing up, or did you watch wrestling, or any movie that really uh, ignited your your imagination growing up, or you're something just you really cling to that you love? Oh, for sure, the Batman animated series inspired me a lot. The Spider Man animated yes. series, of course, the X Men animated series. Um, some wrestling, but then eventually I kind of stay away from wrestling and start like going more into the comic world. Okay. And from, yeah, and from there, just like it's funny because um, I read comics like maybe a few pay a few issues back in my when I was younger, but then I got more into the cartoons, and then after way after that, I stayed away from the cartoons and started reading more into the comics because <laughs> you know, like I guess I started appreciating more of the art and the story. That's actually interesting you say that because I feel like uh, for a 90s kid growing up, that's kind of just the, the evolution of how we became fans of comic books in general. Just we had great TV shows. And then once those ended, we were like starving for more and you get into the comic books and oh, just kind of grow your love. <laughs> yeah, especially that, you know, we had a lot of good runs back in the 90s. We had Batman's No Man's Land. Uh, oh, the yeah. night. Uh, I think Batman Nightfall as well. And just read those stories. You're like, oh, you want to do that same scene as a kid with, with your figures. Now today, you're like, you know, I want to replicate where Batman broke, got his back broken by Bane. Hmm. Or, there, you know, there's another 90s uh, superstar you just took a photo of recently, the Green Ranger. Oh, I love that new Hasbro line. Uh, yes. So, so amazing. Hey, especially that, you know, seeing that today and you're like oh compared to the figure arts i mean i love the figure arts but hasbro just kicked it off the bat you know the articulation the ex just the little accessories they included but you know it feels like a lot to you because you get the unmasked head which is actually nicely painted it just it feels like kind of like a turtle like when you put it on the the, the figure the, on the yeah. oh, sorry on the unmasked head it feels like it's a little bit low but i mean with some little sticky tack you can make it look normal I haven't even put on that Tommy head. I've just been so in love with the figure. <laughs> I got to try it. But yeah, I mean, so far, I really, I'm really liking that you are a, a fan of the 90s. It's right, right up my alley. <laughs> yeah. 90s kids, man. That's what we are. Definitely. The 90s, 90s was the best. Like, everything about the 90s was so good. The music, the TV, the figures, everything was awesome. Oh, and it's yeah. where it, it birthed uh, it birthed it birthed all our loves, that's for sure. Yeah. Now you you progressed and you kind of talked about a little bit how you went from uh, different things of inspiration from animated series and 
different things in the 90s, which the 90s was full of cool animated series. And uh, from there, did you like, did you ever take a break? Because I, I know I did, especially around the high school, college time. Did you ever take a break where you thought, okay, that's kind of goofy, maybe I should stop? Or what do you think? Uh, yeah, I actually did have a break. It was like maybe on my sophomore year in high school to my senior year, just because I was like, all right, I'm the only one that actually likes this stuff. <laughs> maybe I'm going to just hmm. go towards something else. And that was involving just cars. You know, we're, I, I'm, I'm guessing we're all in that car phase. You're like, oh, you know, I want my driver license. I want to start driving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Girls are starting to look a little better than Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> For, for well, for sure, I was like, uh, you know, give figures one to let me in, talk to girls. So, <laughs> had to involve myself into vehicles. But overall, mm-hmm. you know, you end up realizing you're like, ah, uh, you know, I want to focus on my hobby, and that helped a lot. <laughs> now, do you have a significant other of any sort? I do. I have my wife and my my newborn son. Like he's like uh six and a month. Uh, sorry, six oh, and a half month old. Wow! Congrats! Awesome. Yeah, yeah, holy crap. Fresh baby. I know, and, and it's funny enough, um my well, I named my son Miles because my last name is actually his last name, the character's oh, name. Oh, sick. cool. And so, a great movie. Oh yeah, and a great movie. And I, I like I pretty much spoke to my wife about it, like, can we name him Miles? And she's like, Okay. She actually liked the name a lot and boom, there you have it. I have my That's... own little Spider Man. <laughs> That is pretty sick. And also, yeah, congratulations. That's huge news. And I mean, uh, you don't really share that aspect too much of your life, at least on your Instagram, your your toy one. So that's actually crazy cool news. Congrats on that. You got a one one scale fig. <laughs> and yeah, <it's, laughs> I mean, he doesn't have the crazy amount of articulation like a fig arts figure, but close. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the other thing I want to ask you is. When did you get into doing what you're doing now, where you're doing toy photography and sharing it and doing some great stuff and getting shared by other pages, doing, I'm sure, brand deals with people? Um, when did, what, what's the story behind how that started? So pretty much, um, you know, I wasn't like crazy collecting a lot of figures back in the days. I mean, I, if I saw a cool Marvel legend, I'll pick it up or a cool Batman figure. And then my buddy... I, he goes under the Instagram name XX Omega Doom X. I, I know him in real life, and you know he started slowly like getting me into taking pictures of toys. And I pretty much I started off with like funny enough, one of my biggest lines was um, my favorite lines, and as of today everyone loves them is Mesco toys. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Holly <laughs> <I'll tell> <laughs> No, uh, well, pretty much uh, one of my first figures of them was the the Dark Knight. Which is like, classic. you know, yeah, yeah, like no ankle pivot, but, you know, it's beautiful enough. It has that classic look. And I started taking pictures with that one. And, you know, I started noticing people liking them. I was like, all right, you know, I'll keep posting, see where this gets me. And funny enough, it, you know, I just started building more and more. And I started getting more advice from people or asked for advice. of like, oh, because I started with an iPhone, like taking pictures. I was like, you know, I'm not getting the results I'm wanting. So I got to switch it up. And yeah, as a rep. Yeah, and like as of right now, I, I moved on from the iPhone. Now I have a funny enough, an old Nikon D3200 with a 50 mm lens. Nice. How's, uh, how do you? How's that thing? Oh, uh, you know, one thing: don't ever have pets around your cameras. <laughs> put it in a tripod. You're like taking pictures, and then you see the cat running, and you see the cat, the dog chasing him, and the dog tips over the camera breaks the lens you're like holy crap this is like a 400 dollars lens and you just dropped it like it's nothing to you i feel the pain on that more than a figure falling yeah yeah like especially that's like it's way more expensive than a figure so you know it's, it's luckily enough sometimes it's just a spring so i have to like disassemble the whole lens and readjust that quick spring and that fixes it half the time <laughs> and, and i see it's well, half the time huh? What is it like? Uh, was it a huge adjustment uh, trying to figure it out and learn from uh, the iPhone? Oh, yeah. Like with the iPhone, you, you know, you always you feel like you're taking from a wide angle shot and going to 50 amps. It's more like it's more like a close up shot. 
to me. I mean, there's always other lens too, but I'm mostly got I'd used to using the 50ms. Like for the iPhone, you know, you can't adjust. I mean, with today's apps, you could adjust the ISO and all that, but you still don't get that same quality like you do on a professional camera like a Nikon or you know Sony or uh, Canon, other good brands out there. How long have you been using um, the new camera for? I would roughly say around three years. Right, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and I mean, I got some, like after that, I started getting advice on Lightning from my buddy, These Damn Toys. He's a big Batman fan. <laughs> but <laughs> pretty much he was telling me, like, you know, you got to adjust your Lightning. So I started playing around with my Lightning more, and eventually I started getting, like, a good clear image because my old pictures, I always noticed, like, a little shadowy effect, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And eventually I, I finally got the hang of it. And then I started playing where like I grab a light bulb and I put like, you know, like uh, a clear pink paper or yeah. something just so you can get that purple effect or pink effect. Or strangely enough, if you get like enough cutting balls and you make it look like a snowball and you paint it, let's say red, orange, and you put it on top of the light bulb, you'll get that image as well. I mean, you'll mm. get that same reflection on the light. So I, I played around like that too. I think yeah. that uh, not only what you said about talking to people and asking advice, uh, it, first of all, it just takes a lot of uh, humility. And I just think uh, it takes a lot just to even ask for advice and be humble enough to do that because a lot of people could uh, think they don't need advice to, <laughs> to say the least. But I think that's uh, an important thing to talk to other people and, not only be willing to listen to advice, but if you listen to it in a in a manner that you're not pissed off or think they're attacking you. <laughs> I think that, uh, I mean, you took that advice, obviously, and you've been crushing it. So I think that's actually an important thing to remember. Not everyone's trying to attack you if they're giving you advice. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like you, if you want to improve, you know, you got to take criticism no matter what. Like if, mm. like if somebody says, hey, you know, this figure looks off from like housing the floor. He has like a one gap space. You know, you can't be offended. You just got to be like, oh, okay. Thanks for pointing that out. I'll, <laughs> I'll fix that in the future. Yeah, yeah I think as long as it's as long as it's constructive and not just saying, oh, that's rubbish. Like, I mean, that's rubbish. So, yeah, so that you, you can you know look at it and, and analyze how to change it. You know, I, I think constructive criticism is is definitely a positive thing. Now, there, there's a few, because you have a lot of variety, you have a lot of different toy lines, Marvel, DC, different pop cultures, I see some Terminator, Robocop. Um, the thing I want to ask is, in terms of figures, in terms of toy lines, what is your favorite? I don't care if it's DC or Marvel or anything, I just want to know, what is your personal favorite toy line out of Legends, a Mezco? It, or any Hasbro or anything like that. Wow, oh, that's pretty tough because for sure, Mesco is my first, and then second will be Hasbro. And just I'm going with Mesco just because you know the quality you get in those figures is insane, and the fact that like it's soft goods. It's like like playing a with a Hot Toys, but in a one twelve yeah. scale. And just the amount of accessories they give you, like they give you like the most random things. You're like, oh okay, I'll take this. Like they're streak. <laughs> Their street Gomez figure, you're like, I'll take a hoverboard. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to this. Or, I'll, <laughs> or like, I'll take the boombox. That's that's fine by me. And then you get like the other like jackets, or you get the the black long coat, which is really nice too. That's true. Yeah, because yeah, you've been using some different accessories and mixing them up with different um, different figures, aren't you? Like, I noticed on the the new Joker figure that come out, you've mixed it up a little bit with the accessories on that. Oh yeah, that one. So, ooh, that that's an amazing figure. My only complaint, it didn't come with a jacket, and yeah. I had to use the Gray Twins Terminator jacket to put it on him. And honestly, when I put it on, I was like, "Holy cow, this looks spectacular!" Mm, and it does look cool. Yeah, and and I I know uh, I can't recall who gave me the idea too, because they said, "Oh, have you tried this?" And I tried, and I was like, "Oh, I think it was." Doormat Studios, if I recall, or Drone Customs. What are those mm. two? But yeah, another thing I want to add, uh, 
a big help has been customizers, you know, like Harker Customs. He makes some great wired caves or, you know, Doormat Studios makes some great suits. And then Tony May, he makes like great head sculpts. And that helps oh, yeah. big time. Harker Customs looks awesome. I've got an 89 cape on order from him. I can't wait to get it. It looks fantastic. Oh, it is. It's it's like every I see like every line. It's an art. It's pretty much wired. Yeah, oh, that's, that's amazing. pretty I, crazy. Yeah, I can't wait to get that. And also, I was going to ask you. I'm very excited about two figures you recently got, which is the uh, Sovereign Knight Batman, the the blue and grey version. What's he like? Because he looks fantastic in pictures. Oh my god, that figure is amazing. <laughs> Like, <laughs> even if you have the regular one, you want the blue one. Just, <laughs> it's like funny because it's just a color palette, but it's a huge change. It brings that hushed look. It brings more like a, like sometimes you get tired of the, seeing the black and gray. So seeing the blue and gray is just oof spectacular. It brings a, it, like if you take pictures with it more and more, you notice that the blue stands out compared to the black suit. Yeah. No, it looks fantastic in the, the classic, classic emblem as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, that classic emblem is a nice piece too. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wishing one day they'll give us that choice where we can just pop that emblem out and swap it out with another emblem. But I know I'm asking too much there. That's actually <laughs> brilliant. It'd be a cool idea. That I mean, sure, it can't be that difficult because it's just glued on anyway, isn't it? So. Yeah, we're half the time. It's these two peg holes. So once you pop out the emblem, you'll see like two little holes there. And ah, okay. Yeah, the only one, the only problem is with the regular knight, you're going to have to like pop it out and you might break the emblem just because it's so tight in there that you have to like use a yeah. little flathead to push it over. Uh, are you going to be getting a pair of blue trunks for that Batman? Because I noticed that you did it for the regular Sovereign Knight and he looks fantastic with them. It's got a real sort of Arkham City feel to it, that Sovereign Knight they, with the trunks on. Huh? Oh, for sure, my buddy Harker Customs are already getting one ready for me. <laughs> oh, he actually, nice. Yeah, he has some up on pre-order, so if you guys are looking for some. Are you going to be getting the cape for him as well, the blue cape, because that looks fantastic. Oh, yeah, the wired cape, <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought you might be, because when I saw it earlier, like it's got almost like a, I don't know, like a purpley tint to it. It looks beautiful. It does, and especially the, it has like a nice gloss effect, but not really gloss. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, so it goes with this. It just goes with the like the blue itself, and once once you get the, I don't know if you order the black cape, but you'll notice right away. Like, oh, this looks just like the figures, you know, identical color with the cow with the gauntlet and boots. Dang, I, was like, I don't know how they do it, man. It's just crazy. Um, another figure I desperately wanted to ask you about because it's the one I'm probably going to be getting, the Green Lantern John Stewart. Holy crap, he looks amazing. Oh, that that figure is amazing too. I actually did a review on it recently, and I, I couldn't put my. Once I finished the review, I just couldn't put it down. I just kept playing with it. I kept <laughs> swapping the heads out. What's weird enough though, they give you two extra Green Lantern emblem. They, sorry, they give you one extra Green Lantern emblem, and there's no real purpose for it. There's no glow and dark. So I don't know if they mass produced like th that emblem. They just said, "Hey, here's an extra one." <laughs> but, but, I mean, worst case, I, I started looking at it and looking at the PX one with the Hal Jordan, and it seems like it's a little bit more greener on Hal, so maybe you can swap it over. Or that's, um, oh, okay. Yeah, so that's just my chance. I'm like, maybe that's that's why it's there, but who knows? Now, out, of the, you out of the two, sorry, Tyler, out of the two okay. characters of um, Hal and John, who do you prefer? Who's your favorite GL? Oh, that's a tough question because for sure I, I'm a uh, a big animated series Justice League fan, the classic yes, one. Yes, good, good. I so that. I have to go with John. Yes, brilliant. He just has. Uh, I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah, J John Stewart has such a good like a, just a good story arc and throughout the whole Justice League series. Yeah, and he really yeah. does. He really does. Even from the second episode, it, it's just straight in there with a story all about him it's a fantastic character yeah and, and sometimes you feel like he was actually a leader of the gla yeah so, and i like how like he actually hangs around with the other justice league members and he's the most serious one everyone's all like just goof around yeah it's like him and batman just hold that team together sometime with their seriousness <laughs> oh yeah I can't. I'm trying to remember some of the scenes in my head. I remember one of the scenes where they're like the little kids, 
they get transformed into little ones and yes. he's still being serious as a little kid. It's like, Jesus, John. <laughs> uh, so true. Now, because you uh, you have a lot of Mezco, you, I would assume that you are about as much as a soft goods expert as we could get. And in terms of soft goods, there's um, a, a couple companies are going into doing more soft goods, but there's one company that uh, is more like Mezco than any other, and you have a few figures from them as well. So I wanted to get uh, your opinion on this company as well as your comparisons and your contrast. Uh, Soap Studios. You have a couple of their figures. Ah, oh, Soap Studios. That's that's a love and hate right there again. The only reason <laughs> is because the articulation is very very poor. Like I mean, they're they're good figures. Don't get me wrong. The the only thing is like. Well, if I recall, when I had the Flash figure, it just feels so weird. It feels like, um, like if you look at the unmasked head of Barry, it looks mm. like a Mattel, but like a $10 Mattel figure head. Oh, I have them. I can look at them. And you're right. It's, it's a very soft sculpt. Yeah, and I feel like the angles are very weak. Like, it's the, once you just start twisting around, they're really like, how you say loose so if you put it like in a little like he's a sliding shot he starts falling over just because the ankle but i don't know if it's just oh, my yeah. general, no but... no you're right and the then those are rough yeah and, and then i don't know why the pants area it's very tight so on uh, mine are <laughs> really tight so it's like when you try to like pull it forward to make it look like he's running forward it sometimes mm -hmm. just gets stuck or you hear a little like you know like, okay okay that's enough i'm done here <laughs> <laughs> No, I definitely, uh, I definitely understand that. Especially on uh, that flash figure, you could barely get those legs to move anywhere. Yeah, and I mean, I got the reverse flash. Did you get that? Yes, that's that one. Actually, was a big improvement from the previous flash, and I, I'm, I'm sure it's the same body, but something is different on it. Like it feels more detailed, especially yeah. the little, the little vein lines on the chest emblem. That's such that's a nice so touch. <laughs> That is the best. And did you? Yeah. What have you gotten any of the other Soap Studios figures as of recently? Uh, I only got the Green Arrow, the Flash, and the Reverse Flash. I stayed away afterwards just because okay. um, you know, it's it's a it's a it's like a hit or miss. And I already got my Mafex Joker and my Mafex Bane, so I'm kind of like, all right, I don't need another of this guy. Especially that after seeing some reviews, I was like, uh, I'm not missing out much. Just some soft goods. Man, when you said hit or miss, I got a song stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of dioramas, because you have a lot of different dioramas, uh, uh -huh. you have, you have, I would say, look like uh, custom ones from customizers. I don't know if you have the NECA street diorama. Uh, do, do you have extreme sets? Do you use extreme sets? So I do have a few extreme sets. I have the train, then I have the subway train. And then I have um, the abandoned house one, and they are nice, but it kind of like my only complaint is eventually they get wear and tear. So if you know mm -hmm. you can't always have them out displaying like that, you always got to like fold them back in, fold them back out. And now I'm starting to notice like little damage areas where you're like supposed to connect them. Yeah. But overall, they they do give that great illusion, like you know it's a real scene. That's the nice thing I love, and. Right now, actually, I'm trying out a new company called Ready Sets. And, uh, I was just about to ask uh, you about that. Yeah, they're oh, those those things are amazing. Like they're really how, huge. <laughs> how easier are, is the assembly and disassembly? Just so much nicer. You know, I honestly thought it was going to be hard at first because you see, and you're like, "Holy cow, this is this is going to take at least ten minutes to twenty minutes." <laughs> but it literally like it comes already folded in. So all you got to do is un like pull back the set and place each side and then the middle and you're pretty much done it, all you have to do is make sure the little hangers click on the other hangers yeah and that's it's just amazing like the amount of detail they went on to like i got the control tower or space station one and yes. i don't know if you guys uh here let me send a picture through again but it's just crazy like the little halls even have little sculpts sorry not sculpts up a little graphic work and then there's like a little doors that actually open so that's another nice piece and oh yeah and here actually let me I just show gotta, 
for you guys that can't see, he's sending us pictures. Even though <laughs> I'm, looking at the, I'm looking at his page as well. You got some crazy good uh, photos at that uh, the space base. Oh yeah, that the space base is really nice. You know, you can some if you turn down the lightning, you can make it give it that alien vibe, or just like a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe, and it works around. Like you can use Star Wars figures, Justice League space tower. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. Mm. Like, you got uh, the medic area for Spidey and Beast. Yeah, medic area, <laughs> sci-fi area. <laughs> And then there's the the Spider-Man running from away from the cl- uh, running from the jackals. Oh, yeah. I love when you use those jackals. Oh, th- those things are amazing. Nobody started like, I remember I saw D Amazing posting them. I was like, oh, I need to collect jackals. So I just started collecting jackals. I was like, I'm getting them as cheap as I can because nobody wants them right now. And yeah, hey, look I, at you, look at you plugging our next guest for us. <laughs> 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 We're having him on after you. So that's awesome. <sighs> He's gonna get ready for that one. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully, he does some jackal pictures after hearing that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the you definitely use uh, the space space well and show just how many uh, different uses you could get out of it. Probably one of my favorite photos, and it's not even one of my favorite characters, but I just love everything about it. And you don't see a lot of photos of it. It's uh, your picture of I think it's the figure arts of Mayfex wasp just kicking ghost vaulting over a chair that's just one of my favorite photos it's just awesome. <laughs> that figure that made me laugh because i was like why did i put a random chair here <laughs> but, <laughs> but i mean hey it's a science lab so who knows there's always yeah, who be... knows how lazy those people are leaving chairs out <laughs> exactly in the middle of anywhere and uh, yeah that it came the scenery came great like ready sits has a nice display so it gives it that like in the and ant-man the wasp movie background mm-hmm. feel so like in they're inside Hank's building science room, and you yeah. can see here that it kind of feels that it gives me that vibe. Yeah, you you uh, what's cool too is each different photo you're able to give it a new lighting and it just feels like a different place. It doesn't just feel like you're shooting the same shot over and over. Oh god, it's glad to hear. I, no one's ever told me that one, so it's nice to know that part. I really like yeah. the cyborg Superman picture you did. That the lighting on that, how it's just got nice shading with a touch of yellow on, really nice. Oh yeah, that that picture was like, oh, I want to make this look deadly because you know it's cyber Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a Terminator Superman coming, uh, coming, storming into the building. So yeah, that was fantastic, and uh, really enjoyed the line on that one. And yeah, so. now that we we've got into uh, the toy photography, and you kind of said a little bit about uh, how your wife is okay, but what does she think about all of this and this new hobby? Mm. To the new extreme that you've taken it. Uh, so at first it was like, um, it wasn't such a problem. But then, you know, my collection started getting a little bit bigger. And it started, you know, like piling up. So I ended up selling some of my figures. And that ended up, like, resolving some of our issues there. Because, you know, <laughs> I had, like, a lot of boxes. And I had to understand that to make time for photography and relationship. <laughs> <laughs> So mainly when um when I put my my son down, I'm like, all right, she's doing her thing, I'm doing my thing. I'm gonna try to you know get as much as I do throughout the day to get ready for that night to take pictures. How long does it take you to sort of? Obviously, it depends on the shot, of course. But on average, what would you say your usual shot time takes? Because you got so many details you put in there, and the posing's always like on point. Uh for some shots, it it does take like maybe. Just uh, 30 minutes or so. Just because, let's, let's say, for example, my recently Gordon shot, the one I, mm. that one took a little bit long just because I had to like think, I had to like go Google <laughs> Gordon's yeah. office. I have to look for any examples how it looks. And, yeah. you know, I couldn't find a perfect one. So I just made my own, like, de- like kind of like his own office. It so, looks brilliant. I love the poster on the wall as well with like the, the sort of wanted things and the case files on there it looks fantastic i just really like that <laughs> thanks and i also threw the food in the floor i was like hey you know he's a cop <laughs> yeah the dog box is brilliant <laughs> <laughs> i have like seven of those i don't even know i just throw them in every picture half the time <laughs> <laughs> they've got the peg with his hat on and the, the gcpd vest and things that looks fantastic Oh yeah, and I put a little battery ring. I don't know if you guys can see on top of the ev- evidence board. I can indeed. I, I, it's just so cool. The poster pinned up by a battery ring. We wouldn't want that. 
uh, I made actually I made those um the evidence board. Pretty much just got some cardboard. I printed out the papers and I ended up like cutting up sticky notes into little squares and just doodling. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, and it came out nice. I was like, all right, you know, it looks like an evidence board. Good enough. But if you were to flip that, huh? Oh, they say if you were to flip that evidence board, it'll show like a cheese it's box. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius, though. I love yeah, things like that. You're just making something out of something incredibly simple, and it's so effective. Um, in terms of your actual dioramas, like your, the sort of custom-made ones, where do you get those from? Do you make those yourself, or is that something that, that you buy from other people? Or Oh, no. So um, my first diorama was actually from my buddy that I know locally. His name is Ricky Panda 91 He makes a lot of amazing dioramas. Like, he makes, like to the point that they're like two floors 112 scale size oh wow and pretty much um let me see if i could send you guys a quick link so oh yeah if you were to go scroll down you see like he has he builds like churches and 112 scale and and when you see him in person you're like oh my god is is this actually real <laughs> Dang. Yeah, he's built essentially Wayne Manor. I can see it on here. It's just absolutely incredible. I'm make sure to give him a tag. Oh, yeah. His, his stuff is remarkable. It, he, you know, I, it's crazy to know that I've seen, I've known him for like three years, and I see his work getting progress, progress, progress. It keeps just, getting better. Yeah, just like, wow, man, the, the talent here is just amazing. It's like, for example, Harker Customs. Like uh, when I first bought his his Doctor Strange cape, I was like, "Oh, this thing is nice." And then I see him like improve to the Batman cape. So like, whoa, this thing is way nicer. Uh, this is, I think that the fact that you're dropping this stuff, I didn't, I didn't even hear a lot of these people. It's this is the whole reason we like to do this to hear about other people, see these these talents that the algorithm's not allowing us to see, or we just haven't seen yet. Like, this yeah. Ricky Panda guy stuff is crazy. Oh, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Like, the dioramas are unbelievable. Like, oh, it's more crap. modern. It's better built than my house. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk about a, a combination of talent and creativity. Like, I think that this Thanos throne is brilliant that he built. Oh, yeah, he, he actually was nice enough to give me that one for free. I oh, been- yeah, he was like, oh, you know, you can have it, man, as long as you just, like, you know, let me know that if you stay as my customer. And I was like, all right. <laughs> That's so he, tight. Yeah, he's my go-to guy. So whenever I need a new diorama, I go to him. I actually have, like, a – my first diorama was, like, the – I don't know if you guys ever see the city one. No, not city one. So it's like, it looks like an alleyway. That was my first dial from him. And that was lasted for, for a long time. <laughs> Is that the picture you got with Joker in the, in the jacket? Of the the pipe, yeah, that's the one. Mm. That looks fantastic. That does proper sort of Gotham feel to that. It's fantastic. Yeah, and mm. like you know, and to make like the little things, you just have to like print out little graffiti's and throw in the background, and, and it gives it more like a city vibe. Yeah, no, I, it looks brilliant, and the the Joker suits that background as well. If you know what I mean, like the colors of it looks really nice. Uh, thank you. Now. We've come to the time where we want to ask a... All right, we have a couple of traditional questions that we mm-hmm. asked on the show. And uh, they're not the normal toy questions, but they have to do with something that we all love. And I want to ask you, and I feel like you, you've already described that you're in the right age to be a huge lover of this. So what are your top three favorite Batman the Animated Series episodes? Oh, you put me in a tough spot there. <laughs> First of all, um, it's the season one, the bat, uh, the the last la- Joker's last laugh. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Yes, oh, the yeah. last laugh, brilliant episode. That yeah, that that episode was so amazing. Like it's so dark, and this is for like a kid. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys remember, like it's supposed to be based off kind of like on the last laugh, the the mm-hmm. comic book series. Yes. Like where, you know, he, well, this one, he kidnaps a kid and then he has Batman chase him down. And it's just like, it almost catches like the same comic files. Like, oh, that's one of my favorite ones. And as for other ones, uh, does, does the movies count or no? 
Animated movies count, yeah. Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. Mm, that definitely awesome. counts. Yeah, that one was really good. Like, you get the Batman origin. You get that. Cl- you don't get the the new. Oh, sorry. I don't want to say new because it's not really new. But like, you get the the classic look, the animated series classic look, where their their body's not so pointy. <laughs> <Yes>. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. That's to me. It's like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that look, but it's it's still nice. Another one. I don't know. It's kind of tough to tell. Like. It's a love and hate because I, I like the Batman Sub Zero, but oh, that's but it reminds movie. you of Batman and Robin. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like oh, uh, I feel like I'm gonna hear Arnold Schwarzenegger say, "It's cool time." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what we'll killed yeah. the dinosaurs? Yeah, that's actually uh, those are some great picks, and I don't think we've often heard or ever heard the last laugh. No, that's not that's not been picked before, is it? Even with picks. Captain Clown's famous line, <laughs> <laughs> never heard. Yeah. So that's actually a, that's a great pick. I love that. Mm. Yeah, and that Alfred is. draws him a bath. I remember I had a little plush toy, a little cow, and I used to call him Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love that's it. Fantastic. Yeah, his own cow butler. Yeah, and I think a bonus one I would add would be um, Cal Butler. I would be probably beware of the Great Ghost. Ah, uh, the nostalgia. Yeah, just having Adam West. It's like oh, hearing his voice in a animated a Batman animated series is so so nice. Yeah, it's yeah, it was great. Like... Especially that you see like Bruce's soft side, where you know he feels bad that his that his role model is poor so he pretty much rebirth, he buys all this stuff and ships it back to his house secretly that's when he's fantastic, sleepy that's fantastic isn't it that's <laughs> yeah, fantastic it is it, it makes you wonder it's like i wonder how batman did it here i'm going to i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to you know i can't do this sneakily i got to drug this guy <laughs> it's odd to think about isn't it how he actually snuck it back in there <laughs> yeah it's like i never noticed it yeah, it's like, wait, how the hell did you put back a whole suit without him noticing or waking up? But it's cartoons. So I got to remember that part. <laughs> so when you when you look back at, at the animated series um, and when we were watching it as kids, did you ever sort of think, I take a step back and think, holy crap, we're watching something that is pretty special here or... Because I, I was a kid, I can remember just watching it and, and just enjoying it for what it was. But now when you look back, and think, holy crap, we had it good back then. It, it's just, I feel like nobody was going to ever replicate that series again. It's just too good, isn't it? It is. Because fortunately, t- I don't want to bash on the new movies, but like the Batman Last Laugh, the current one that just came out, the whole storyline is messed up. The Batman mm-hmm. Hush is messed up. The Gotham by Gaslight, I actually did like but between the other you know with the new movies i don't know it's it's just giving me like a, a bad taste because you have you know batman having a thing with batgirl it's like what what's going on here and then bat uh i think i like batman bad blood i'm trying to remember how that one was <laughs> i'm sorry i meant batman the killing joke previously i don't know why i said last laugh yeah yeah, no, that ending and as well is weird. I, I hate the ending. I can't can't see Batman laughing. He should be punching the Joker in the face, not laughing with it. It's a bit weird. <laughs> well, I did like um the current Young Justice. That's you know that's still doing good mm. right now. While we're talking of Justice, I usually I'd ask you about the Arkham series. Are you a, th- a fan of the Arkham series? The games, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I played all of them, even the Origins. Oh, awesome! So, what would you give as a ranking of, of your first to least favorite of those games? Oh, that's a tough one because <laughs> uh, I really did like. Um, I don't know why. I, I actually did like Origins. I know it has a yeah. lot of like people don't really like it, but that's actually it's really nice. The story's good, and the, the you know the gameplay is really good i guess it would be like batman arkham then batman origins and then batman arkham knight yeah that's a good choice origins is so underrated as well it really is such a good story and um if they were actually released in chronological order i think people would appreciate origins 
a lot more, but just because it was going back, it was more difficult for them to do something new, if that, make, if that kind of makes sense, because they kind of had to put the Joker in there to show how he came into it. Oh, yeah, especially that we all assume he was the Black Mask, next to you know. Yeah. <laughs> Joker. Yeah, oh, so good, wasn't it? Yeah, and the design for Deathstroke. Oh, I love that design. It's... Oh, that boss fight was amazing as well, wasn't it? So oh, good. yeah. But in smashing like no other, like, ah. Hello, <laughs> yeah. Like, gotta... That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, because I, I feel like I tried that one like three times until I eventually beat him. But I was like, oh, my God. That was challenging, actually. And sometimes I feel like restarting it just to play it again. It's just, it's so good that boss battle is. But then I'm like, you know what? It's actually quite hard. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and no, I sometimes like rewatch that scene just to get like ideas. Like yeah. just seeing them helps really like with toy photos. I'm like, all right, you know, I like where Deathstroke hits Batman right near the gauntlet and Batman blocks it. And I was like, all right, I got to recreate that scene. <laughs> Well, you mentioned earlier that you're um, a Justice League animated fan. Now, it's my favourite series of all the DCAU stuff, so I'd I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about it. So, what would you give as a top three favourite episodes for Justice League as well? For sure, I really liked Epilogue. I don't know if you guys remember Epilogue. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. It it gave that like it gave us that relief. What happened to Terry? Because honestly, like they cancelled. Batman Beyond at season four, and we're like, okay, uh, what's gonna happen? Okay. And next, you know, we get the epilogue episode, and we're like, all right, this is awesome. It's a good story. You see Batman's soft spot, and then he, you get the unraveling truth, where Terry's actually Bruce's dad. Sorry, uh, t- yeah, t- Terry's dad is Bruce, and just by um, because he was like mm-hmm. a secret baby, where he has to get his yeah. uh, his DNA's everywhere. It's like, how come nobody's ever checked that? <laughs> Yeah, it's almost a test you, baby, Terry. It's like, just don't tell nobody. <laughs> and uh, and we get to see the phantasm again. Oh, yeah. That, I know, you eventually see what happens to Andrea, because you're like, what happened to her? And next thing you know, you see her as an old lady, as a phantasm, and you're like, oh, my God. There yeah. she goes. I guess another one uh, would be... I think the greatest story never told... Oh, yeah, that's a good episode, to be fair, yeah. Good old Booster Gold, you can't, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, because, you know, you barely see the Booster Love, and you finally get to see him, and you're like, oh, man, this guy gets treated like trash. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got a guy that's time-traveled from, like, thousands of years into the future, and he's still terrified of Batman, which is what I love. <laughs> I think everyone is terrified of Batman in the Justice League. <laughs> he's like, crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, and I think... Another one would be the once and future thing. Yes, that is my all-time favorite ever episode. So good. Yeah, like uh, that's my favorite part where Batman meets Batman. He's like, Batman, this is Batman. <laughs> and they're like, they both say at the same time, shh, shh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that is a great episode. And you were about John Stewart earlier saying how serious he is. That episode epitomizes John Stewart and and his whole serious persona and attitude. And we've got a bit of Hal Jordan in there as well. Yeah, that was, that was interesting that we actually got those two working together. And it was more than one episode. I think it was a two part, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was nice. And it's just crazy. Cause you see like the future, future fighting Batman beyond and them. They're, they're getting their ass kicked by like just thugs. Yeah. And you're like, what's going on here? These minions, they're just beating them. Yeah, no, it's truly is a fantastic series, isn't it? Do you are you a fan of Justice League or Justice League Unlimited more? Would you say? I'm, gonna, I'm I, guessing Unlimited. You're leaning towards. Uh, let's see. That's a tough decision. I think <laughs> for both. I I mean I remember GLU more because GLA yeah. was more like when I was near. I think middle school. Uh, I'm trying to say middle school or elementary. Yeah. So I have a better memory of GLU. Nice. Actually, it, it, Jill, you start airing in 2006. So, yeah, that was like my beginning of high school. No, maybe end of high school. <laughs> <laughs> That's just such a fuzzy memory. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, it's nice that we have someone that has as much knowledge as you. Of the, <laughs> Most people just tend to give up after BTAS, which is understandable. But. 
Oh, yeah, I don't blame them. I mean, like it's it's hard to get back into another good series and just and with a whole different cast. So you're like, oh, I just like Batman Solo. Well, Bats uh, BTA is there for you. But if you want to see like the other awesome heroes, Justice League and GLU are there. Now you kind of mentioned about the movies leaving a sour taste in your mouth recently. However, we've gotten a new trailer this week. It's a pretty big deal. You've probably seen it. Uh, it's for the Joker movie. What do you think? What are your thoughts? So that I don't even know where to begin. I'm not like I love <laughs> it. I love the fact that it's a it's a whole different era. And you know, I don't even think it's he's the Joker. I think he's just going to be an inspiration for the Joker. Because the whole timeline, we're like, you know, you've seen Walking Phoenix. He's like a meeting young Bruce Wayne, and it's like it's not giving you that TV Gotham vibe. It's giving you like he hasn't. I say, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's the first first time I've heard anyone compare this Joker movie to the Gotham TV. <laughs> That's pretty. Good. Uh, I mean, the the Gotham TV. It's kind of a bummer where like everything, everyone is super. Already at like their middle age, and Bruce is still young, and you're yeah. like, "What the heck is going on here?" But I mean, if <laughs> if you didn't think about it as a Batman series, and you just thought about it like a detective show, it's not a bad show at all. No. But as for the Joker movie, I'm really excited for that one. I can't wait for one more month. It seems like October fourth down here. Yes. But man, the just the it feels like we're getting Heath Ledger, but more darker tone Heath Ledger, or more funnier. It's hard to tell. I mean, it until we see it. Because <laughs> I mean, the best, thing, the uh, best thing is we don't really know anything about the movie, even after like all this trailer. Do we? it's a bit of a mystery. Is what's going to happen? Oh yeah, I, I I tend to overanalyze when I see trailers. I'm like, all right, it seems like this is going to happen, and this is like the end of the film. Where I don't want to, yeah. like, I don't want to say theory here, and I might spoil it for people. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's a, yeah, that's that's fair of you. But we don't we give you free reign if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well for sure i mean if you look i'm thinking about by looking at the joker costume this is probably like an inspiration for the future joker especially like it's not even the colors and it, it, we don't see like a joker mob in the comics you know so that's why i'm like oh this is this could be he could be possibly an inspiration for a possible joker well thank but, goodness we I mean, only have a month to wait I know, so I'm like, oh, hopefully I don't jinx it. I really, I don't know. I kind of want to jinx it, I kind of don't. I just, I, <laughs> just watching Walking Phoenix as the Joker is just amazing. And it's already way more interesting than anything Jared Leto did. <laughs> and he's better than Jared Leto. I'm going to put a little <laughs> mental tattoo on my forehead. Uh, <laughs> that's still one of the funniest things. Uh, all right, so we want to, at this point, ask you uh, to, if you have any... Thing, any projects coming up any anything major that you want to plug you uh you said that you have a youtube channel i do i do uh toy reviews i don't i try to do as much as i can it just depends my time mm -hmm. but pretty much um if i get time to it i post it as, as you know as much as i can and i my main focus is toy photography always you know i have more fun doing toy photography than reviews that's for sure yeah like with reviews, I mean, there's so many great people out there that you know. I, I, I guess it's kind of like provokes me. Uh, it kind of pushes me down. Like, ah, oh, you know, I know a parallel universe is gonna do it. He's gonna do such a better review or D amazing or uh, the Fush. Oh, I love the Fush. <laughs> yeah, but there's always. I mean, there's always your thing, and I'm sure people appreciate your thoughts. And I'm sure there might be something that you notice that other people might miss out on. Or, so. I'm, I'm sure that uh, your channel, you got your the people watching you for you, and I know it, I know what it's like. It's the one of the suckiest things is having to hear your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like God. I sound I sound like I'm mumbling over there. <sighs> but I don't even it's... watch my own things. Afterwards. I can understand. <laughs> oh, it's tough, especially when you're like, oh, I thought I sound manlier, or I thought I sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's my main concern. I uh, yeah. I can relate to that for sure. Yeah, when I hear my voice, I'm like, God, oh, I sound like a kid. God damn it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I like, I think in my future for reviews, I'm going to try to do like a five minute review. So, you know, people can just like, all right, watch it really quick and don't have to watch me mumble around. 
<laughs> nice. Well, that's uh, if you guys are, need to jump on that and people want to subscribe, where would they go? It's just at Toy Reviews. Oh, yeah. So if they go on my Instagram, it'll be under YouTube.com. Okay. It's in a link? Uh, yeah, it's on my YouTube, uh, my uh, Instagram. Okay. Cool. Perfect. And uh, any other, are you doing anything with any brands or anything like that coming up? Uh, as of right now, just um, some minor things with ready sets. They're, you know, they're uh, sending me a diorama to take photos and nice. you know, just give them my feedback. Like, hey, you know, what else can we improve? Nice. So, the street you know, urban? Uh, the, the sci-fi diorama. Ooh, new sci-fi diorama. That'll be fun. Yeah, and then um, sometimes I get, like, prototypes from Harker Customs. You know, he likes his output, and I give him, like, oh, you know, this is awesome. This is an amazing piece. Yeah, and that's uh, definitely we're gonna be we're gonna be tagging the people that you told us about Panda and Hardcore Customs, and I'm gonna listen back anyone else you mentioned because <laughs> that is some uh, that was some clean, cool work that if the algorithm is blocking some people, they need to see it. Oh yeah, there's a lot of talent out there, and sometimes Instagram algorithm just wants to show us the latest music video of someone or <laughs> or what's Kim Kardashian doing today. I'm like, oh god, I don't care about this. <laughs> yeah, I see grown men playing with toys. That's what, I'm <laughs> That's what I want to see. I'll be like, oh, what what is Black Series uploaded today? He has to take shots. Well, Scott, uh, do we have any last words for our? Uh, yeah, a, a big here. thank you for you to coming on. It means a lot that you you replied and we're up for coming on the podcast at uh, short notice. So I'm really really happy that uh, we got to meet you. And yeah, thanks so much for your inspiration as well. With um, your photos and um i'm annoyed you've made me spend 80 dollars on a green lantern figure <laughs> um but there we go <laughs> no but uh, seriously um thank you for coming on it really doesn't mean a lot and yeah we both really appreciate it and um yeah you should definitely come back on the show every six months or so we have uh, guests come back on so we'd love you to come back oh yeah totally i and thanks for reaching out to me you know it was a pleasure to talk to you guys and you know just especially meeting you tyler and scott and, and i you know I, i'm surprised that, like scott's work is awesome I'm seeing all those bat figs i'm like oh my god <laughs> thanks it's really kind of you yeah and um is this the first podcast that you've done it is right yeah this is my first podcast yeah. oh that's awesome well you killed it man fantastic you guys yeah, pop my awesome. my podcast cherry Yes, yeah, it? yeah, it's what we're all about. We love, you know, integrating everybody in the community. You know, nobody is, uh, no one's too big and no one's too small. We have everybody on this podcast. Uh, yeah. I'm glad to be in it. That's for sure. Yeah, well, again, we're happy to have you. If you guys didn't hear his name or even remember it again, again he is Jerry. It's gonna be easy for me to remember because I love Seinfeld. But it, he also has a great. Uh, Instagram page again. If you're not following it, do yourself a favor. Look up at Astro underscore Ender, and you will be uh, in for treats weekly. He posts regularly. He posts high quality work all the time. Never fails. He's always continuing to try to one up himself on each post, which is that's all you could ever want. It's nothing worse than someone that's lazy and just doing it just to do it. Uh, I love the way that uh, he tells a story. I love the lighting. He could use the same prop, but because of his different angles and lighting, he could make a whole new world appear. And the, also the variety is always welcome because it does get, even for me, tiring to just see Batman photos all the time. And uh, <laughs> of course, you got to love a 90s kid, one of us. So I, I want to thank you again for coming on. Like Scott said, it was short notice, but you're someone we've had our eye on for a while to come on and we're glad we were able to finally get you and we yeah we'd love to have you back on uh hopefully hopefully very soon and again we hope nothing but the best for you continuing on we hope that uh you continue to get brand deals coming your way with like ready sets and uh with other companies because you do a really good job at showing off th their product as well as uh showing your skill and why they a lot, they allowed you to do some sample shots so we hope that you continue to have success in what you do and we look forward to seeing what you do with that new ready sets as well as uh the new mezco figures that you're continuing to get so again you guys yeah, thank you for listening thank you for uh 
your continued support. The listens continue to go up. Uh, we love the feedback that Scott and I get telling us that you enjoy the show, enjoy the guest, or that it's a guest that you had never even heard of before, and then you've ended up following their content. You love their work. <laughs> so we think, and we even love when people tell us that we suck and what we can improve on. Like uh, Jerry said, if you're not willing to take cons- uh, constructive criticism or just cons- cons- criticism in general, <laughs> you're never going to get better. And even though it sucks sometimes to be told that you suck, uh, it's better than <laughs> when you improve. So. We, we're at DC Figures and Collectibles. We thank you again, and uh, we do what you do too. And we continue to try to improve upon a craft that people might find weird, but we absolutely love. So again, thank you for joining us. And we will be back with uh, another show and be amazing next, next week. So speak to you soon.